Hi, this is JP from Northern Lights Over Arkham. Happy Arkham Week of Horror to everybody. And uh, I am making this playthrough video because FFG was kind enough to ask for me to make a playthrough video using the new ultimatums that will be released with the latest FAQ for the game. So uh, in this new FAQ we will have ultimatums and boons. So the ultimatums and boons list provides an optional set of variants to further tailor your experience of Arkham Horror the card game for your group. Each ultimatum is a restriction, limitation or additional rule that makes the game harder for the group of investigators. Conversely, Boons reduce certain limitations and restrictions to make the game easier for a group of investigators. After deciding which scenario or campaign to play, each group of investigators may optionally select as many of the following ultimatums and or boons as they wish. Groups are not obligated to choose any particular ultimatum or boon, and the choice of which to use must be unanimous among all investigators in the group. Once chosen, all ultimatums and boons are permanent throughout the duration of the campaign or scenario. Ultimatums and boons are not created equal. Some may have a greater impact on difficulty than others. Uh, groups may wish to discuss which boons and or ultimatums to take in tandem to fine-tune their preferred difficulty level. So, uh, it this brings me to what we are playing today. So I decided to demonstrate three of the new ultimatums. Uh, the ultimatums I chose are the ultimatum of the broken veil. Anytime one or more weakness cards are discarded from the top of an investigator's deck, shuffle those cards back into that investigator's deck. Then I decided to take ultimatum of disaster. Each investigator's deck building requirements gain one additional random basic weakness. So uh, I will be having two random basic weaknesses in my deck. And finally, ultimatum of the Highlander. Each investigator's deck can only include one copy of each non-weakness card by title, unless multiple copies of that card are required by that investigator's deck building requirements. So this basically makes deck building a bit harder because you are losing a lot of your synergy to have two copies of a given card so you really need to think about what you are putting into the deck on top of that i decided to play patrice so patrice's deck size is already bigger than most of uh, other investigators 30 card deck size it is 42 cards starting and uh, after the basic weaknesses and stuff uh, signature cards it is 46 cards now because remember I am playing with two basic weaknesses right from the get-go then if some effect makes me dif discard cards from the top of my deck and I discard one of those um, basic weaknesses I will have to shovel it back into my deck and not just with, with it and uh, actually now that I'm reading the ultimatum of Broken Veil, uh, it also applies to my signature weakness. It isn't just basic weaknesses, it is every weakness. So imagine Lola Hayes, for example, with the um, Crisis of Identities. If you discard those, they will just get shuffled back into your deck and there are multiple copies of those in your deck already. So that makes things a bit harder. I'm not talking about any of the other ultimatums. I will let other content creators to reveal those for you. And after we get the whole FAQ, you are free to use any of these ultimatums and or boons in your games, however you see fit. But this is what I'm rolling with in this playthrough video. So, uh, you probably want to see what I have in my deck, so let's hop over to ArkhamCDB.com, I mean ArkhamDB.com and see uh, what kind of deck I built for Patrice. 
Okay, and this is my uh, Patrice Hathaway in Curtain Call of Ultimatums deck and um, it is quite a long list so I won't go through the whole deck list. I will add a link to my video description so if you want to check the list out for yourself um, and go through it uh, a bit more thoroughly then there, uh, there is a list in the video description but um, really quickly there are a lot of uh, different things in here but basically some of them do basically the same thing like Azure, uh, Azure Flame and Shriveling are basically the same spell with a different uh, penalty if you draw a specific token and whatever there are basically like I, I was trying to get uh, uh, copies of a car that are quite similar in use but are different cars so I am uh, there is only one copy of each card in the deck so it's a really long list so not going to grow, uh, go through the whole whole deck list now and I haven't uh, selected my uh, random basic weaknesses yet that will do on camera just in a moment so I'm really looking forward to that. The only thing I will uh, redraw from the basic weaknesses is if I draw a, a multiplayer weakness or a um, class specific weakness so that those I need to redraw but other than that I am sticking to what I draw. And uh, yeah there are a lot of allies and a lot of stuff in this deck but remember that usually you have two copies of every card uh, in a really coherent deck list so this this will be quite random uh, but uh, luckily Patrice's playstyle is draw five cards play what you can discard the rest draw new five cards so I would will probably go through my deck quite fast either way um, of course now that I have an extra basic weakness in the deck it might be bite me in the ass in the end but uh, we'll see how that goes so without further delay uh, let's hop back over to uh, the scenario okay and we are set up here on curtain call so um, the reason I decided to play curtain call is that part of to Carcosa is my all-time favorite campaign of Arkham Horror the card game and um, why I decided to play Patrice is Patrice is one of my most um, favorite investigators ever to be uh, released for this game so far and I always enjoy playing with Patrice um, and these new deck building restrictions that I have with the ultimatums give it gives Patrice new flavor and I'm really excited to try this out. Uh, the only thing we have to do for our deck building is I will shuffle my huge pile of basic weaknesses and uh, draw two at random and those will be my basic weaknesses for this playthrough. And I am playing like this would be the first scenario of a campaign so I am starting with zero experience etc and uh, I could continue playing this this campaign with this deck um, if, if <laughs> everything goes well and I mean maybe if I get wrecked I maybe won't continue it or maybe I will I, I, I don't know yet but yeah let's draw the weaknesses so I'm just picking two at random from from somewhere from the deck so I think those might be okay hopefully they are uh, we get the 13th vision and the devil okay well those are my weaknesses and that is that so yeah uh, I will change sleeves for those shuffle them into my deck and we'll get started so without further delay let's get started Okay, and we are ready to begin. So I have sleeved up my weaknesses the 13th mission. So basically when I reveal this it comes into my threat area and I fail on ties with in skill tests and the devil I cannot play other assets that other than the devil when it is in my in my hand. So those are a bit annoying, uh, especially with Patrice, because you might draw a really good 
hand uh, and get a, the devil in it and you have to play the devil before you can play the other assets and after the round ends those assets are gone into your discard <coughs> okay well let's see uh, that i'll shuffle my deck quickly we'll read the act and agenda and start going from there so i am not reading uh, the fluff text that much. I think if you haven't played Path to Carcosa yet, I recommend go and play it before watching this video because it's a really good campaign. But I'll read the act and agenda cards, and that's it. Uh, the third act The theater is eerily silent. The old wooden floors creak beneath your feet, and a light rain gently patters on the roof as you explore the auditorium. There are more rotten corpses among the seats, and the rest of the crowd has vanished. And the doom threshold is six. Awakening. You pinch yourself to see if you are dreaming, and sure enough, your skin stings and reddens. You take a few deep breaths and try to think rationally. Whatever is going on, you must explore the theater to learn the truth of the matter. And we need three clues to advance. No clues at our starting location, and this road is too. Uh, let's draw our opening hand. And we get Prophesy, Idol of Xanatos, Last Chance, Matchbox, Ride of Seeking. Well, I think I will be playing the Ride of Seeking. And uh, yeah, the rest can get um, discarded. So. Hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm discarding this and drawing a new card. So leather coats, I could play that also. That is my mulligan and we'll stick to that. So I think the first round will be just playing a bunch of assets down and next round going from there. So, uh, this will be a quick turn. First action, I'll play the Leather Coat. Second action, I will play Ride of Seeking. And last action, I will play Matchbox. Hmm. Yeah, I'll put the Matchbox over here. So, those were my three accents, and uh, I will need some tokens on onto my car. So, if you are wondering what kind of tokens I am using, these are, are from LCG tokens. You can find their shop on Etsy, but just many people ask what kind of tokens these are, so those kinds they are. And if you want to get some yourself, you can check their shop there, and that is the end of the um, uh, commercial part of this video, but yeah, I'll, I'll provide uh, information in my video description for everything you see on the camera, if you're interested. Okay, that is my turn. Three actions done, play three uh, assets, and no enemies will go to upkeep. We discard our hand, we uh, draw five cards, we get Mr. Frilet, Madame La Branche, Mysterious Raven, Patrice's Violin, and Well Dressed. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a duel. Uh, first encounter card of the game is Spars of Carcosa. Attach to your location. Then place two Doom on that location. If there are no Doom on attached location, discard Spires of Carcosa. Action Investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues, here remove one Doom from attached location. And that is bad. Uh, we can't use our spell to investigate this, but we could drop uh, the Shroud with the matchbox and try to investigate it a couple of times to get rid of the Doom. We really don't want to lose time with this that much, but yeah, that was a bit unlucky. Okay, well, 
will go from here. So I am trying to get rid of the uh, doom here. So I'm using the matchbox. So we exhaust the matchbox and use one. So now the shroud is one. And um, I'm actually thinking of Yeah, uh, I will commit well dress to this test. And I am playing uh, with, I didn't say on standard difficulty. So, we'll draw first in, in chaos token of the game. So, I am investigating three versus one. Minus three. That didn't go as planned. Okay, I am committing Patrice's violin for this test. Three versus one. Uh, yeah, three versus one. Zero, we get rid of one of the doom. The last action, we will investigate again. And I am committing uh, Madame Lebranche and Mysterious Raven to the test. So four versus one. Uh, it is another zero, so we get rid of the Doom and we get rid of the Spires of Carcosa. But that is our whole turn wasted for, to get rid of that, to not uh, lose any turns. Well, we lost one. Uh, no enemies will discard our hand. Go to upkick, one, two, three, four, five. We have Promise of Power, Arcane Initiate, Stall for Time, Guts and David Renfield. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another Doom. Encounter card for this round is Dissonant Voices. You cannot play assets or events. And I was really looking forward to playing David Renfield for, uh, on this round. But uh, we can only commit cards to skill tests, so that is fine. We will probably try to go find some clues now. So, um, first action. We'll move to the backstage. And there is one clue here. And fourth, when backstage is revealed, put two of the set-aside backstage and doorway locations into play at random. So we have the backstage doorway locations here. I'll give them a quick shuffle. We'll get those two. This goes back into my set aside pile. And I will put them into play like this. And add some connections. So I would really want to get this clue from here. And I think I will just try to investigate without using the right of seeking. And I'm committing Promise of Power and David Renfield to this test. And why not stall for time also? And uh, I am investigating uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight against three. And I have to add one curse token to the chaos bag. Okay. Eight versus uh, eight versus three. Yeah. And of course, it is the auto fail. So what else could it be when you are uh, committing all of your cards to the test. So might as well use the right of seeking here to get this clue because it is the end of my turn and I am committing these cards. So I am four, five, six, seven versus three. Minus one. 
uh, we draw a card hello chalice we get this clue and that is our turn and this gets discarded we discard our hand this should be ready uh, we draw one two three four five uh, Idol of Xenatos, Sparrow Mask, Moonstone, Six Sense, and Resourceful. Well, I'm not getting any of my fighting abilities or, or spells, but I'm hoping we don't find any enemies. And we gain a resource, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, 3 of 6, Encounter card is Fanatic. Um, spawn, reveal location with the most clues forced after Fanatic enters play. Move one clue from Fanatic's location to Fanatic. Forced when you defeat Fanatic, take control of all of its clues. So reveal location with the most clues. Uh, every reveal location has zero, so because I don't have a way to fight this guy yet, I will spawn the Fanatic at the theater. And we don't have to um, care about him yet. So we have these two back door, uh, backstage doorways here, but um, I think I uh, for this round I am setting up a bit more. I will play the sparrow mask. So we get that into play here then we'll take a resource so now we have three again and we are going to play this when it gets discarded so last action i will move down to here and of course it's the trap room uh, so three shroud, one clue forced. After you reveal the trap room, search the encounter deck and discard pile for one copy of Swarm of Rats and put it into play and engage with you. Uh, it, it has victory one, but the rats are the problem. Um, I need to find a way to punch them next round. So we'll search the encounter deck for a copy of Swarm of Rats. Give the deck a good shuffle. And it spawns engaged with me, so that was my last action. Okay. Enemy face. Uh, the rats bite me for one damage. And upkeep, we discard our hand, and I will play the moonstone from when it gets discarded. So now I have one plus willpower and plus one agility. So I could basically try to evade the rats also. And also the uh, Sparrow Mask gives me <coughs> plus uh, two agility or willpower when I use a chart, uh, an offering from there. And I just wish I would have had used one uh, before those rats beat me, but it is what it is. So we draw one, two, three, four, five, gain one resource. Let's see what we get. Drawn to the Flame, Sword Cane, Clairvoyance, Rise to the Occasion, and a Stray Cat. So, th thematically, the Stray Cat would be great uh, to uh, run off the Swarm of Rats, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, uh, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another Doom. Encounter card is uh, twisted to his will. Revelation, There is, if there is no doom in play, twisted to his will gain search. Otherwise test willpower axe, where axe is the amount of doom in play if you fail discard two cards from your hand at random. Okay, well, uh, I'm just going to... I am five versus four. Unfortunately, rise to the occasion doesn't work. And I don't want to use the Drone to the Flame. Uh, this is a bit of a pickle. Do I want to commit any cards? 
Mm, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll commit the drone to the flame. We have other ways to get clues, so I am six versus four. And we draw minus one, so we pass, so we don't have to discard any cards. Okay, then... Um, I think we'll just try to punt... no. Uh, I would really want to play the sword cane and hit the rats with it. Maybe I'll do. So I'll take one attack of opportunity. Uh, I forgot I have the leather coat, so the uh, rats nibble on that. I'll get one resource. Second action, we will play sword cane, and that doesn't cause attacks of opportunity. And I am going to hit the rats with the sword cane. So five to one. Just put a token here, so I know when it is exhausted. So five to one on the rats. Elder sign, and uh, Patrice's elder sign is uh, plus one. After this test ends, you may shuffle all but one card from your discard pile back into your deck. And um, yeah, I, I like every single one of these cards. I put only good cards into my deck, so let's see what I really don't need. Uh, I think the well-dressed can stay there. Not that many polis in this scenario. In the later one, uh, in the next one there are a lot of polis, so well-dressed will be good in that, but in this scenario I think there's only the ghosts that, uh, or the bolter guys that you need to parlay with, and I have spells. Okay, so we got to shuffle our deck, and yeah, so these are dead. <coughs> Last action, I'll try to investigate here. And I could try to investigate without using a charge, so... Um, Uh, the rise to the occasion doesn't work you know, for this. I'm only one down for the test, so... Okay. I use matchbox to lower the shroud to two, and I'll go three against two. Minus two, we fail. Uh, okay, well, it is what it is. Uh, no enemy actions, we'll go to upkeep. We discard these cards, we draw one, two, three, four, five. Uh, Patrice's violin, keep faith. St. Hubert's key, store for time and emergency cash. Okay. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We are at five of six doom. Um, we are running out of time here. And uh, encounter card for this round is another fanatic. So uh, unfortunately, this fanatic comes here, grabs the clue, and is engaged with us. But now we know that we only need to defeat this fanatic. Actually, I think I will play stall for time and uh, drag this guy around. So I don't need to defeat it this round, but it won't bother me. So, yeah. Uh, this is actually a card I haven't played, so I have to read it. I have had it in my deck, but never had the, a good chance to play it. So, store for Triumph Parley. Choose an enemy at your location. Test Willpower Axe. Uh, where Axe is the 
chosen enemies fight or evade value, whichever is lower. If you succeed, exhaust chosen enemy, but do not disengage from it. If it is uh, non-elite, it does not ready during the next upkeep phase. If you fail, return stall for time to your hand. So I can just uh, drag him around and hit, hit him with the sword cane now and then. So first action, we will play that. So, parlay, we are testing 5 versus uh, 3. I think I want to go higher. 7 versus 3. 8 versus 3. Uh, 7 versus 3 is enough. <laughs> oh my god! That auto fail is killing me now. Okay, so that failed, but it was a parlay test, so no attacks of opportunity. Uh, we'll hit it with the sword cane. So I'll use the Saint Hubert's key. Six versus three. Uh, we'll evade it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll evade it, not hit it. So 7 versus 3. Uh, 6 versus 3. Uh, skull is minus uh, 1, minus 3. Instead, if you have 3 or more horror on you, we don't. So uh, this guy is evaded. Last action, we'll play emergency cash and then fast play the keep faith. So we net 1. Resource and we get one, two, three, four blessed tokens into the chaos pack because I want to lower the chances to hit the auto fail, apparently. And enemy face, this enemy readies, engages us. Upkeep, one, two, three, four, five. Promise of power, prophesy, uh, Madame Lebranche. Um, we don't talk about this guy, and improvised shield. Okay. Well, that is annoying. Okay. Well, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Oh yeah, we gain one resource also. So let's go to the next round. So we add a doom, so we advance, so I'll just remove these. We get the emissary's message. Abruptly, the main malformed body of an unnatural nightmare slams onto the stage. Its slithering tendrils reach, uh, reaching into the aisles. It opens its maw and lets out a shrill, uh, shrill piercing song. The melody is uncanny. The notes sear into your mind. Pain pounds in your forehead and blood runs from your ears. Search all set aside area cards and the victor display for the royal emissary enemy and spawn it in the theater. Encore. The creature's song echoes relentlessly throughout the halls of the theater. The melody repeats again and again, yet somehow never the same note twice. Forced after the royal emissary is added to the victory display, remove all doom from play and reset the agenda back to agenda 1A, then place three doom on that agenda, and we have a six doom threshold. So, um, we are running out of time here. This guy spawns in the theater, it is massive. So, uh, four fight, four health, two evade, prey lowest. Willpower, massive hunter, retaliate, forced at the end of the enemy phase. Each investigator at Royal Emmy series location or a connecting location takes one horror and two victory points. Okay, um, then we get an encounter card and it is frozen in fear. Well, what else could you expect? So, uh, I think this round we need to get rid of this fanatic. But we only have two 
tries on it, so I'll just commit everything to the test. Unfortunately, Prophesy came right when the agenda had advanced, so it doesn't have extra copies of wild icons. Mm, this we can ignore for now. We have a great deal of our deck left because of that Elder Sign earlier. Uh, so, first action is to fight, which takes two actions. I'll use Sword Cane to hit the Fanatic. And uh, we are fighting 5 versus 3. I'll go 6 versus 3. How do I have. Okay, 6 versus 3 has to be good enough. Bless, so we are 8 versus 3. 10 versus 3. Don't empty the bag, man. Minus 1. We succeed. Those get uh, removed from the uh, deck. Uh, we deal 1 damage to this guy. And we will hit again using the Promise of Power. So we have to add one Curse Token to the Chaos Pack. So we are hitting with our Fist and we don't have any, anything to commit here. So uh, we are fighting uh, 6 versus 3. Yeah, 6 versus 3. Zero. We defeat this guy and get the clue. And that was our last action. Uh, we'll test the frozen in fear. I'm using one charge from the sparrow mask for this. Uh, we are testing seven versus three. Minus one. We get rid of it. Enemy face, this enemy hunts here, and we'll get one horror because it screams in the connecting location. We'll discard our hand, except for that, and uh, that is our turn. We draw one, two, three, four cards. We have the infable. In a fable truth, uh, drawn to the flame as your flame. This is really needed. And David Renfield. And we gain a resource. Okay, now we have a way to kill that um, royal emissary. So let's see. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. Encounter card for this round is Fanatic. Uh, the highest location with uh, the uh, reveal location with the most clues, so yeah, future me problems, let's put it there. Okay, well, uh, first action we will play Azure Flame. And second action, we'll move to backstage. Last action, we will use Azure Flame to fight. Oh yeah, and last round we got one charge back here because we took a horror from the Royal Emissary. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm committing drawn to the flame to this Azure Flame chart. So I'm fighting 6 versus 4. I'll go 8 versus 4. Uh, we are 10 versus 4. Emptying all the blessed tokens. 12 versus 4. Ah, I would have wanted them to stay in the back a bit longer, but yeah, we'll deal two damage to this uh, Royal Emissary. 
And enemy face, it hits us for two damage. We replenish one charge on the sp sparrow mask. Take two damage and we'll actually let the leather coat get defeated. And at the end of the round, we get one horror from the scream. And uh, upkeep, we discard these. Draw four more cards, one, two, three, four. We get Olive, Olive McBride, Unexpected Courage, Six Sense, Guts. Okay, we have good cards to defeat the Royal Emissary next round. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom and count the card. Is Rotting Remains. Test um, willpower 3 uh, for each point you fail by check one horror. I'm committing the guts to this test. We are 7 versus 3. Minus 2, we pass, so we get to draw a card. And it is the Robes of Endless Night, which I would want to play, but I don't have the resources for it at the moment. Okay. First action, we will fire up Azure Flame, use one charge from the Sparrow Mask, and uh, we'll commit the Unexpected Courage. Uh, actually, we'll save one charge uh, from the Sparrow Mask. We are... Um, five, six, seven versus three. Zero. And uh, actually zero means that I'll take one damage with the Azure Flame, but we defeat the Royal Emissary. I'll put it in the victory display there. And we uh, revert back to here and put three Doom on it. So the Emissary will be back, but not right now. Uh, second action, I'll get a resource and third ac action, I will play Olive McBride. And these get discarded. We draw one, two, three, four cards. Oh, sorry. And we gain a resource. And we still need the third clue, maybe next round. So that is that round. Uh, what we got is uh, winging it, uh, arcane initiate, fine clothes, mist of relay. Okay, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom, four of six, and counter card is frozen in fear. Well, damn. Uh, so, uh, move, fight, or evade costs two. Nothing I can do at, uh, for for that at the moment. I'll go see if there's a clue here. So first action move, so double action. Rehearsal room, one shroud, uh, one clue. Forced, after you succeed by two or more, while investigating the rehearsal room, take one horror. Okay, uh, last action, I will investigate. Let's see, I will just use the matchbox. So uh, the shroud is zero. So we are going to succeed, hopefully. Uh, we are investigating two versus zero. Zero. So unfortunately I succeeded by two or more. So I take one horror. And we'll get this clue. And we will commit the Arcane Initiate to the Frozen in Fear test. 
and I'm using olive. So I'll reveal three tokens. One, two, three. Okay, we are not picking the auto fail. So minus three. So we are six versus, because I committed the six versus um, three. So we succeed with the help of olive to get rid of uh, frozen in fear. We discard these cards and we draw one, two, three, four. And again, a resource. So, wither the devil resourceful whole rosary. Okay, and so we are clogging our hand with the weaknesses now. And uh, at the end of the round, I am spending the three requisite clues to advance. His final bow. A uh, shadow creeps along the wall beside you, and you hear, and your heart leaps into your throat. You turn, and a figure flits away just out of sight. Either your mind is playing tricks on you, or something else is in the theater. You follow the direction of the shadow, rounding a nearby corner. At the far end of the hall, he stands, awaiting you. A man in an elegant suit. Uh, elegant black suit, uh, his face covered by a pale mask. Though his attire has changed, you instantly recognize him as the actor who played the role of the stranger, one of the characters from The King in Yellow. He turns and disappears through an open doorway, as if taunting you to follow. Choose one of the set-aside locations at random, put that location into play, and spawn the set-aside man in the pallet mask enemy at that location, instead of his normal spawn location. Advance to one of the three copies of Act 2 at random. Remove the other two copies of Act 2 from the game without looking at them. So we have the three random Act 2s here. And um, we will say I'll pick this one. These will remove from the game. We have the stranger here or the man in the pallet mask, and we have the rest of these uh, locations, and um, I'm not trying to look, when I say stop, it is the one at the bottom, so let's see, I'll say five, six, seven, eight, nine, stop. And it is the backstage doorway. Okay, well, that was lucky. <coughs> And, uh, sorry, and um, we spawn the man in the pallet mask there. And, uh, yeah, that is uh, the end of the round, so, yeah, let's see, I through the cards, I had the resources I did it at the end of the round, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a do five of six. Encounter card is descent into madness, search, revelation. If you have at least three horror on you, lose one action. Unfortunately, I do, so we lose one action. Poltergeist cannot be damaged except by spell, relic, or encounter cards. Paul, I test uh, book three to attempt to banish the geist. If you succeed, deal it one damage. So we are fighting the geist this round. So I'm using the Azure Flame. And uh, we are fighting five versus three. I go six versus three. We could uh, actually we could try to evade it, save a charge for the uh, later game. Yeah, let's back up. We are evading it, and I'm using one charge from my spare mask, and we are evading uh, three, four, five, six versus four, and I'm using olive. 
One, two, three. Okay, <laughs> I'll pick these two. Uh, we fail. Because this is a minus three now. Okay. We'll try again. We'll evade. Uh, this time we are evading five versus four. Minus three. We fail. Okay, let's kill it. Uh, five versus three, six versus three. Now this round didn't go as I planned, but it is what it is. Six versus three, six versus five. Minus one, we just barely did it and got rid of one of the curse tokens. So the boulder guys is dead, but that was our whole term. Wow, that, that was un unfortunate. Mm, I just double check. Yeah, I think I haven't played any assets. I played Olive before I got the Devil, I think. Or maybe I didn't. I'm not sure. Well, either way, we will discard that. And we draw one, two, three cards. Okay, no resource. That is that round. And guess who's coming next round? So let's go to the next round. So we add a Doom. And this guy spawns again over here. Oh dear. Um, yeah. We are getting into trouble here. So we draw an encounter card. It is twisted to his mind, so it searches because we don't have any uh, doom in play. Uh, Black Stars Rise, test uh, book four. If you fail, you must either place one doom on the current agenda or take one horror for each point you fail by. This can cause the agenda to advance. So I'm just testing the... No. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking of uh, testing and just putting one the Doom down. So, we are testing... Uh, two versus four. Minus one. We are failing by three. So we should... Uh, we would need to take three horror but we can't so oh that's just way too much so i'll put one doom down and yeah we will um, okay some uh, decisions here I think I'm going to play Shriveling on top of the Rite of Seeking. We are going full combat mode now. Second action and third action will move to this backstage. And it is the dressing room, four shroud, zero clues, triple action, heal three horror. I don't think we have time for that. This um, man in the pallet mask is aloof here. So, enemy face, this enemy hunts over here, deals us one horror. We'll replenish one charge here. And Olive is ready. We discard these two, draw one, two, three. We are, uh, yeah, we are running out of the deck quickly here. And we draw the 13th vision, which is a shame. So Cat Mask and Isle of, Idol of Xanatos. Okay, um, yeah, we are, we are, 
arriving at the end of the game quite fast here. So we played the Shriveling, so we only have one resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, Encounter Cardis, Whispers in your head. <laughs> okay. Peril hidden. Uh, revelation secretly at Whispers in your head. Uh, this may into your hand. You cannot commit skill cards to skill tests. Damn. And um, uh, double action discard Whispers in your head. This may you uh, from your hand. Okay, so that sucks, basically. Uh, I think there's no way to investigate here. So we will first action engage. Second action use the Azure Flame. We can't commit cards to skill test, so we are using uh, one charge from the Sparrow Mask. This is because if I drew, draw a correct token, I'll take one damage and replenish that charge. So uh, we are uh, five. Six, seven, versus four. Minus three. And <laughs> because of this, that intuition, we fail. Uh, yeah, nothing else to do. We'll try with the shriveling. Five versus four. I think the end is near. An <laughs> auto fail. Ah, this this game hates me. Okay, so enemy face. This enemy moves here. Hits me for two damage. Uh, they both hit me for a total of two horror. I'm one horror away from dying. Actually, I'm putting these on top of here. Okay, so I still have some room for horror, but I'm two damage away from dying. So I need to kill the Royal Emissary next round to not die. And uh, yeah, we'll discard Cat Mask and uh, Idol of Xenatos, and we draw two cards. Mysterious Raven and Dowsing Rod. Nothing helpful. Can't play those, we can't commit those. And uh, we'll gain a resource. So that is that round. Oh yeah, we got one chart here. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, 3 of 6, Encounter card for this round is Spirit's Torment, attached to your location. Forced, after you leave the attached location, you must either take one horror or lose one action. Action, place one of your clues on attached location, discard Spirit's Torment. Okay, well that doesn't do anything for us at the moment. Okay, but we have these two guys to deal with, so first action, we'll use Shrivelly. To try and kill this, I am using uh, Charles from the Sparrow Mask. Uh, we are seven versus four. Minus one. We deal two damage. Uh, we will shrivel again. Uh, I am using Olive. And we are five versus four. Do we really want to use olive here? Uh, we have to. Three tokens. Okay, yeah. No way to succeed. Minus four or minus six. And retaliate kills us. Yeah, that's an. Uh, so the royal emissary hits us for two damage. Oh no, no, no. Okay, we'll we'll die soon enough. So Olive is dead. 
Last action. We try to shrivel again. Five versus four. Minus two. We fail. And now the Royal Emissary kills us. Okay, well, uh, that was the end of this uh, curtain call of ultimatums. So, as you can see, an extra um, basic weakness in your deck can screw you over. Uh, we failed, I think, one critical raw, uh, draw from the Chaos Pack because of this. Also, this stopped me from playing assets, which would have helped me and uh, clocking my hand and uh, yeah uh, also the ultimatum of the highlander made me do a really uh, on synchronetic deck or, or a deck that is all over the place and there's really the luck of the draw which cards you get of course uh, most of the cards work really well in Patrice that I put in the, de the deck so I didn't have the like dead draws that much but I would have wanted to put uh, some uh, skill cards with high wild icons more into the deck but because you only can put one that limits you but yeah that was uh, the uh, curtain Call of Ultimatums for the Arkham Week of Horror uh, 2024. So, uh, keep a lookout for the other content creators doing uh, content for this, um, these new Ultimatums. And uh, hope you guys have a really good rest of the Week of Horror. And hope you guys like this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.